Um, so welcome everyone to the second session of this semester's uh, CCT. Uh, we have Naveen Mahantesh with us today. Um, before I introduce Naveen, let me just quickly, um, you know, introduce this semester's um, question, so to speak, for the CCT conversations that we are trying to um, study, understand from a whole range of practitioners. The question that we are asking is, you know, how can we ask, uh, how can we read urbanization processes beyond the uh, metropolitan conditions and beyond the frameworks that were set, set up uh, for the metropolitan uh, conditions. Um, so that's with that broad kind of an orientation, um, what I would do is quickly introduce Naveen and uh, let him um, you know, present his uh, lecture today. So Naveen Mahantesh's practice lies at the intersection of art, architecture and the city. He is involved in creative research with a love for urban life. His, his past projects includes um, working with teams of artists, philosophers, and curators in generating projects about built forms, human settlements, and the public realm while, consider, while considering the city as a studio. His projects provide alternative uh, perspectives for the banal routines, take inspiration from urban myths, and engage with ecologies that the city thrives upon. Naveen is the principal architect of NMAD Studio, a design firm based in Bangalore. His projects and propositions have been uh, a part of Sarai Reader, exhibition of 2000, exhibition number nine of 2013, and Insert 2014, curated by Rux Media Collective, Mediating uh, Modernities 2013 at uh, Shrishti School of Design, Design for Change at TEDx, RV Vidyaniketan in 2013, Bangalore and FOA Flux Afterlife Technology Symposium at Swiss Next 2015, uh, Students Biennale at the Kochi Biennale in 2016, uh, Festival of Stories, Art in Transit 2016, and, and so on. Uh, Naveen has received a grant from Koj in 2013 for his collaborative project, Ecologies of the Excess, and as part of 08030, um, he, received a, he received a grant from um, India Foundation for the Arts, uh, Project 560 Found Space in 2014. Um, he has been a, a city as a studio fellow at uh, Sarai CSDS and curator in residence at ISCP New York as part of the INLAX Shiv Dasani uh, Fellowship. He has been a visiting faculty and critique. Uh, for architectural design at design institutes in Bangalore, including RV, uh, School of Architecture, and SIT Tumkur. His recent talks include a presentation at the Washington Project for Arts, Washington, D.C., the Department of Cultural Affairs uh, for Arlington County, 2015, International Studio for Curatorial Practices, New York City, 2015, SAAJNU, uh, New Delhi, 2017, and the Future of Indian Art Education Conference, Kochi Muses Biennale in 2017. Um, with that long, um, you know, kind of um, um, list of achievements that Naveen has, uh, I now invite Naveen to give his presentation. Welcome, Naveen, and uh, screen is yours. Thanks, thanks, Shreyank. Uh, hope to have a good, engaging session here. So, shall I share share the screen? Yes, please. Yeah. Is it visible? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks, thanks for uh, logging in for this online uh, uh, storytelling, let's say. It's not a lecture. Um, so as Shreyang said, I'm Naveen Mantish. Let me just hide this. As Shreyang said, I'm Naveen Mantesh, architect, urban designer, curator. Uh, we have a firm called Naveen Mantesh Architecture and Design. It's based in Bangalore. And today's talk is going to be about um, the, the, the process, the, the, the thought process behind arriving at any answer for this kind of a wondering. Like, could be something? How do we kind of arrive at an answer for this? How do, we, how do we start wondering about what something could be or would be or should be, right? Like, shayad kya or shayad kyun, right? 
so this is where i'll i'll try and uh, understand i will will try and discuss how how to formulate a research methodology around this question right now the whole idea of could be uh, can be uh, understood through these four processes right so one is uh, through observation of any any uh, phenomena we, we we arrive at a pattern recognition and there is hypothesis then there is prediction and there is validation once that prediction comes true now this is in short the scientific process that we are talking about but how does it apply right so to give you a small example of this this is uh, uh this is small it is flower this is an orchid in in madagascar its uh, latin name is angricum cispedale or something like that now this was a flower uh, in madagascar which was observed by charles darwin in 1862 now immediately once he saw it he saw the stem of uh, that flower was very long you can see that green thing coming out so immediately he kind of observed and through the pattern recognition of how uh, flowers get pollinated he kind of predicted that there must be an insect with a long tail or a long uh, 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 antenna that kind of pollinates this flower right this this was an observation in 1862 and they never found that insect right until after 40 years after he died this sort of uh, this insect called uh, xanthopon morgani was detected i mean it was uh, captured as a visual right so uh, this is where that whole idea of prediction and hypotheses and uh, validation the, that whole process of uh, observation comes to a fruition right it, and uh, in uh, to attribute that idea of prediction the name uh, xanthopon morgani has a suffix of predicta as well within it right so it it all started with this and there could be a moth with a long tail or a long uh, uh, antenna and it started from there and somewhere that prediction came true this is again another example to look at this whole process and how how this process kind of comes through uh, in 1705 edmund halley uh, documented a synopsis of the astronomy of comets where he uh, uh, he applied newton's laws of physics uh, from principia mathematica and he he got the synopsis of astronomy of comets where he very specifically documented uh, which year which comet was uh, uh, entered the earth sky at what point in the sky etc 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 and through that he very specifically predicted that the next comet is going to come in 1758 right he was never alive to uh, kind of witness his prediction come through but that validation of a certain principle being applied over observations and it get validated over uh, uh, once it's uh, fulfilled is something that's that's very interesting for myself because it 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 pushes you to the edge of that field right like this kind of uh, exploration in either biology or in uh, in physics it's they are like literally at the cutting edge of their fields while they are doing this so that is where we try to now discuss like can we apply this to cultural theory can we look at this kind of pattern recognition hypothesis prediction validation to architecture history uh, built environment architecture and built environments mostly through uh, the history that they accumulate or through the history that they accrue so this is where the whole idea of could be urbanism comes where we are trying to look at okay we are here right now where we are where are we heading what could be the urbanism of tomorrow or what could be the direction that urbanism is heading right now this becomes our premise first we need to kind of understand or give ourselves a definition of what is urbanism now i've, I've been teaching urban design for uh, around 6 years now for masters and till today kind of i've never been able to 
explain anybody like what is urban design like if somebody has urban design I'm like i don't know but urbanism is something that we can define you know urbanism you know this is a small definition that i came up with for myself to start thinking on uh, some things so urbanism is man made but its evolution is organic this is a very interesting thing for me because whenever we say something is man made we 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 uh, attribute it to some sort of a precision to it some mechanical quantity to a quality to it where it's uh, it's working is extremely precise but urbanism is something where its evolution is extremely organic right so this talks about how human settlements is an organism in itself it produces its own culture it inhabits its own precedent the greatest achievement of urbanism is its ability to solve problems of human habitation and settlement now uh, this is where uh, uh, i feel the urbanism greatest aspiration is to inhabit an environment totally man made right so it's like if the base instinct uh, within biology is survival of the fittest the base instinct under which urbanism thrives or uh, or it exists or uh, propagates is the greatest aspiration is to inhabit an environment totally man made now this urbanism is a constant process of making inhabiting and archiving old environments now one of the uh, outputs of urbanism is an urban form right uh, or in hindi you can call it a shahri vyavastha or shahri sthiti now how do we define this we can define it as something that encourages human settlement ki logon ki basti now this could range from like a small pond or water body around which settlements tend to uh, happen it could be the foothills it could be uh, many many things uh, that kind of accrues human settlements around it so an urban form is also someone something that it develops its own local economy right like for instance there is a whole uh, settlement that happens around a landfill and there is a whole local economy that is built around the landfill itself so in that way landfill becomes an urban form right it incubates its own actors and agency uh, that produce new cultural experiences so each of these urban forms has its own uh, set of people and places that's very specific to the urban form probably a uh, lake would have a fishing settlement around it a uh, landfill would have a scavenger settlement around it so each comes with its own actors and agencies now this is a broad framework upon which we kind of build uh, what is uh, what could be the urbanism that we are heading towards and in this uh, uh, presentation we discuss few uh, ideas around which this new urbanism or the next urbanism could be centered around now what are these uh, ideas that kind of provide momentum for urbanism is these five uh, uh, tendencies of urbanism that kind of that kind of uh, becomes an urban form or an urban moment in the future uh, the first part is called ruralization it's uh, i'll come to the detail of it second is smart as a new local third is an instant city fourth is urban villages fifth is landfills or the idea of excess and sixth is the idea of drift city right so these are the six ideas around which uh, there could be urbanism in the future right for uh, the sake of this presentation we will not look at instant cities or landfills uh, but we'll focus on the other four right now we look at the idea of uh, uh, ruralization like if urbanization is a uh, a force that ruralization can be seen as a parallel force where we look at do androids worship electric cows right so cow worship is a uh, an extremely traditional ritual thing even in future when there when there are probably um, androids working making our jobs for us will they be worshiping electric cows 
Now, to explain more about this ruralization or the idea of ruralization, I'll take you through a few instances through which we can understand this term, right? Now, this is the neighborhood that I grew in. There's a small park. There was one temple around it. And my house was uh, on the back at the right. There used to be cows that were tied and cows were milked and we used to get those cows. This is where I was around three or four years old. There was a big people tree. There is still a big people tree at the back. And that park that you see was a pure uh, place of recreation. We would play there from morning to evening. And that's it. There is no history to this place. There is no... Uh, it's, it's just a park and a neighborhood and a temple. right? Now, over time, uh, four more temples developed around this place. And also a temple came under the people tree. Again, uh, it came because there was space. There is no uh, uh, archaeology or anything to that place. Now, because there are these four temples and there are specific idols of uh, certain goddesses that are uh, put up there, a local village festival happens uh, every year during Shivratri. Now, the festival rituals are of a village festival, but there is no village as such. But now this has become a site of such rituals, right? So somewhere in the archaeology of uh, this place, from nothing, it, it has gotten a, a ritualized local uh, character to it, which was never there, right? So this kind of starts defining how that place is used in today's context. For, for instance, uh, girls or ladies never used to enter the park in the night, but now since it's a temple, it's become a more open space. Everybody goes there at any point of time without fear. Uh, the noise levels has increased, but the idea is that from a pure playground space, it's now become a space of ritual. Now this is a tendency, right? So this is what happens in that park. Now, the, now we see such uh, instances across the world, right? So in Italy, many of uh, the villages have emptied out because everybody has moved out. So there are many um, uh, developers who have bought over villages because of the local character, local architectural character, the, the local character of that village. And since there are no local people there, immigrants are maintaining that local character of that place. So you can see people from Sri Lanka or Malaysia who are working in Italian villages and their job is to maintain the character of that village. Right? So this is where we are uh, kind of maintaining a certain ritual of the past, a character of the past through methods or in places that has no stake in it. Right? So those are some few instances, and this is the third instances where it was one of our own project. Uh, the project was called Ecologies of the Excess. You can uh, check it out. Uh, the, uh, it, so this happens in my village, in my village that's around uh, 420 kilometers from Bangalore, where uh, there is this, uh, if you took look at typical plan of my village, the house, the, the cow is part of the, uh, is, is, within, is placed within the center of the house, right? And there is a ritual where uh, uh, on Ayur Puja, they make six, uh, sorry, five cow dung mounds for five Pandavas and they pray. And in 2012, it was very interesting that there was a long line in front of uh, one of the houses that had a buffalo. And everybody was waiting to for the buffalo to drop its dung. This was very fascinating for me because uh, apparently there was a shortage of cow dung in the village, right? And this was very shocking because cow being a very integral part of a social structure, especially at a very grassroots level like a village, this was happening. So we kind of started studying why it is happening. I will not get into the details of this project, but it was mainly because 
the the cow was part of uh, an ecosystem where uh, the the cow's dung would be fed as manure and the feed of for the cows the fodder for the cows would come from the fields this was a cycle that used to happen over time the cow has exited exited this cycle so now there's packaged milk dairy packet milk there uh, and even the practices of fodder or the practices of fertilizer has changed right so there's no longer a need for the cow in the uh, in the household so what does that exit mean what has happened to that it's no longer required as part of our uh, social structure but it is still very essential to maintain some rituals that are like uh, observed with uh, like a like strict adherence to that ritual culture right so this this was an interesting project where it it gave us a few diagrams on how to uh, 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 predict or how to make drawings or modules of uh, of these ecologies ecosystems and where they are heading which also translated into some diagrams for a strategy for clean bangalore by ankit bhargav who who kind of it was his project but the diagram language came from there but the whole uh, idea of the cow is no longer required in the house but uh, it is very much required for the rituals it was an interesting uh, uh, situation to look at the what is happening in the social fabric right this is where we kind of brainstormed and back then we predicted like how packaged milk is produced there will be packaged cow dung right and four years later and even now you can see cow dung's uh, cow dung is being packaged and sold on amazon.com so again the rituals are being observed with uh, by practices that has no stake in the ritual itself right so without cow you can have cow dung in your house now this tendency leads to like these are very small um, situations that we are talking about but this tendency if it's pushed if it's pushed to policy making if it is pushed to uh, decisions uh, uh, regarding infrastructure development then we start having projects like these right like amravati plan in uh, andhra is now vastu complex right so the director who created an imaginary city in bahubali is going to design uh, the capital complex for amravati now the biggest one of the biggest infrastructure uh, projects that happening in india is the road network to connect the char bhan right so uh, somewhere the impetus comes from this idea of ruralization the term was coined by shrajna kaikini one of our initial collaborators and this tendency has a very local implication it has an implication of on how you consume things and also an implication on how policy is made within our country right so that's that's where this is a, a very interesting term a very interesting term to be aware of right so you can check out more on that project on that link ecologies of the excess dot dot wordpress dot com, and this whole idea of ritualized localism is going to be there in our country. It's very inherent in our in in our way of life, and how it's going to drive urban form or how it's going to drive architecture and built environment around us is going to be uh, interesting to see, right? So from this, where we are getting cow dung. on the internet we go to the next kind of tendency called smart as a new look right now this is a very interesting image uh 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 shreyam can we do audience interaction or should i just go ahead with the uh, presentation yeah it's, it's fine if you want to yeah 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 Yeah, can can somebody tell me what this image might be? But the, just there's one problem. I think they'll have to only do it in chat. 
format okay. no problem so because uh, so yeah, i'll ask yeah. you what do you think this image is about um, it looks like some one of those uh, pujas that you no not puja but the sankranti ke time you do na that yeah, yeah, yeah breaking yeah. of the tree yeah for uh, <laughs> could be that i don't know no so this is very interesting for me because uh, there is a small village near udaipur uh, you have to give your thumbprint to get your ration now this is an image where in that village the internet is only available on top of that tree so the villagers literally have to walk a kilometer and a half climb a tree give their thumbprint come back and then they get the ration so this becomes a very interesting thing where uh, this dependency on internet uh, is now a thing right so more and more of our spaces are getting defined by where the internet is right like even in the airport you would rather sit on a bench that has good wifi than an airport than than a bench that has no uh no internet right so what what does this mark mean right like everybody who has a who has been around a 3 year old would agree that a mobile phone with an internet is the best babysitter you can get right so what does this smart mean right what does what does it mean we have everything smart around us smart tv smart phone smart water bottles smart uh, cars smart, every smart cities what does this smart even mean So to understand this idea of smart as a new local, we'll we'll try and understand what this term smart means. Now, if you've seen this film Spectre, it's it's it's. I, mean, I love that film for many reasons, but one of the things that happens in this uh, film is they inject uh, James Bond with something, and suddenly his blood becomes smart blood. what does that mean right like which means he can be tracked wherever he is his blood has a presence right so this whole idea of smart meaning presence is something that is interesting interesting for us uh, for instance if your watch is smart then it has its own presence it is it is documenting you at all points of time right if a city is smart then it has its a presence of its own it's measuring the traffic levels it's measuring where the parking is available where it's not available things like that another way of looking at it is if you look at this four movie series of die hard the first die hard film happens on a tower nakatomi plaza it happens in an architectural space the whole story unfolds in an architectural space die hard 2 happens in an airport in a like an infrastructural space die hard 3 happens in a city in new york where there's uptown downtown central park die hard 4 happens by the whole plot revolves around hacking a city right so the city is has a presence but now you are kind of playing with that presence so this is a very nice way to understand what does smart be Right, and how even the kind of narratives or the kind of experience that we are going through, how it has changed over time. This is where things become interesting. Where like, what happens when there is no internet? So, a QR code lost in a no Wi-Fi zone is it just a black and white pattern? Right. So, we were doing one walk through uh, in a, in Kaban Park. It's a it's a large park in Bangalore. and there was a uh, when the pokemon go was a big thing people would meet up and do these pokemon go get togethers right and there was a place in this park where there is no internet and the response for of everybody when they entered that space was as if they hit a brick wall like they stopped right and we find that that frustration within us as well when there is no wifi so more and more of our space kind of gets defined by the access to internet right and this idea of internet also raises possibilities to these in phenomenon like like this infinite options on the screen like an infinite scroll and the xiaomi phone which was launched in 
uh, sold around 40,000 pieces in 4.2 seconds, right? So these are the kind of numbers that we get once we look at the smart world. The traditional notion of uh, transaction or consumption, you would never get like 40,000 footfalls in a store, right? In a, in a year probably, forget 4.2 seconds. So now uh, this is the idea of, these are, these are the kind of ideas of transaction that that term smart brings in. What is archaeology anymore, right? Like your Facebook, your Instagram, it keeps popping your stories from a year back, two years back. Uh, uh, so it, it keep, that's, that's one way of keeping your user retention on the social network, right? So digging through accumulated data is apparently easier to catalog than digging through accumulated dust. Somewhere uh, there is a place where, uh, you know, the server has gotten old, but such digital data doesn't never, it, it has no age, it doesn't get old. So somewhere the idea of the archaeology of the future is just a line of code. It's, it's not a palimpsest as our physical archaeology has, but it's just a line of code, right? So it, somehow this, these terminologies are interesting to work through while looking at smart as the new local. Now this idea kind of exploded over the COVID period, right? Now smart has become your living room, has become your classroom, has become your meeting room, has become your uh, wedding hall, has become your funeral space, everything, right? That's how you kind of look at human phases now, like this meeting, this uh, discussion is also an, an example for the same. This also has risen into, uh, has, has given out uh, an interesting way of experiencing cities, right? Like, uh, like the, the transition of how you experience fiction has come a long way from, let's say, literature, where you used to read about fantastical stories, but you had to imagine it. Then there were comic books, then there were films, and now there are video games that, that are quote unquote uh, immersive. Now you are allowed to roam, not just roam, but you can fly through the cities through these uh, windows. A very interesting happen thing happened where few of the gamers of Final Fantasy, where now it's an on online community that is happening through this spaces where one of their community member died during COVID, they couldn't meet. So they organized a funeral in the digital space. So this is an image of that where all of the avatars are wearing black clothes and they're going to a funeral. So this, this talks more about how uh, digital spaces are a place for imagined urbanism for the future. Right? Like the whole metaverse and uh, avatars, it's, 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 it's like how ruralization was one impetus to look at uh, or one, one trigger or one uh, uh, incentive to think through about urban forms. Similarly, the smart, uh, the idea of smart as a new local is another uh, digital urban form that is being found on a huge scale, on a, on a scale that is uh, beyond any imagination. Now the third part is some, somehow my, my favorite, where one of the favorites where the urban villages within the cities, uh, it, these, these are very interesting places that I, that I really like. They, what, are, what are urban villages? for which we need to understand this term morphology. I'll briefly go through it. Like if you look at uh, any tree and you look up, they have its own pattern of growth. And from that pattern, you can uh, kind of identify what kind of tree it is, right? Now this is a morphology of that tree. Before I go ahead, uh, this is an image, this is a painting by uh, Gustav Caligo. 
a rainy day in uh, paris uh, i'll come back to this but i just want you to know the multiple perspectives in this painting right now how does that happen because of this morphology of the city which was again done by hospitalization and carved through but the city has its pattern through which you get this kind of an urbanism right so somewhere the morphology of the city and the urbanization or the urban character or the uh, urban life in it is defined similarly this is one more example of a morphology where you can see a small concentric uh, thing happening at the top usually there's a temple or a mosque or something over there at the center around which civilization or the morphology has grown shank uh, sorry yeah yeah go ahead nothing nothing sorry yeah so this is one more image of you can see bandra kurla complex at the right and you can see the adjacent slum on the left right so uh, and you can and we all know the difference in the kind of character of the urban character each one proposes right so somewhere this term morphology is very important for us to understand uh the next term now this is chandigarh chandigarh is a gridaran pattern again the kind of morphology the kind of uh, experience it proposes it's it's very convenient right like if somebody asks direction over there it's just like left right left right left right we can imagine a very intense chase scene happening within probably the slums over here but over here the chase scene is just going to be like a marathon where one person is running behind behind the other in a straight line right now within uh, uh uh the master plan of chandigarh in sector 45 there's a place called burel right so you can see how it is literally defining the grid it's turned 45 degrees and it's also very dense right now this has happened because of while chandigarh was made there were 65 villages that were wiped out uh but there were few villages who who resisted that we don't like we don't want our village to be part of uh this kind of urbanization this this whole thing was called a uh, pind bachao andolan right so what they did they continued the grid around the village but they put a ring road around the village so the village cannot expand anymore it is restricted to that ring road or firni in the local language now what this does is these places with like these villages within the larger city are termed as urban villages now these places becomes places of low rent for any immigrant who comes to the city right so anybody who is working in the city would come back to this place because the rent is affordable over time because of such demand the uh, uh, the urban village gets denser and denser but it can't uh, go horizontal it can't grow horizontally so it gets denser vertically right that's the crux of uh, an urban village where at one point of time the density within the urban village was like 700 people per hectare just right outside in the grid of corbusier it was around 80 people per hectare so that's a kind of disparity in uh, uh, density is what we uh, recognize right now this comes with this kind of congestion this kind of density come with its own urban experience it comes with its own architecture as well right so in burel uh, at the center of that there is a fort from the mughal era right and it had in it it had four bastions and over time you can see how the houses have literally come upon the bastions right you can now hardly find any remains of the bastion but the architecture that has come or replaced it has kind of followed the same geometry or trying to do the same uh, uh, uh same kind of opening same kind of inhabitation over there 
now these uh, this idea of congestion comes with a different kind of culture in itself right so like 700 people per hectare it means they have to live with each other in close proximity now this is one more example of uh, delhi at the top where uh, kirki village is there and around with, around which there is malviya nagar and other uh, uh, like design neighborhoods on the right you can see probably what the left image was the right image is uh, a satellite image of gurgaon now within gurgaon the master plan of gurgaon this is one of the villages and if you check the master plan of gurgaon you can see the same strategy of a ring road has been proposed in around all of these urban villages so these are going to uh, be the places of future congestion right so why are we interested in this right <clears throat> and what is the culture that this kind of an urban village uh, produces now this is an example of a case study that we took this is in uh, bangalore now on the left that you see as cause is the electronic city all your big mnc's infosys ibm you name it it is there on the right it's the effect right so this is called konnapana agrahara it's a very interesting place you can see the congestion over there people who work on the left stay on the right right and this whole neighborhood this whole urban village is now to let it's now to let the main uh, urban uh, the main architecture over there are pgs typical architecture eight floors all buildings have violated all the buildings have gone edge to edge and the density has increased uh, i think around 40 fold in the last 8 years right so now this is very interesting for us because the morphology of the place hasn't changed now this is a very interesting contrasting uh, phenomenon to ruralization where we are looking at alien people maintaining local rituals here we are looking at uh, migrants inhabiting a local morphology and kind of redefining the local culture right so because of the pgs because of uh, the mnc's next to it there is a huge influx of uh, 20 to 30 20 to 32 35 year olds into this place right and the spending capacity of that space has increased a lot now that defines its own culture right now this is still very interesting for us because it's still in a place of transition like it's been around 8 years since these people have come in it will be very interesting to see where they go during covid it was very interesting because everybody went back home but now it's going to be very interesting how they kind of uh, how how this place uh goes ahead but this this response of an urban village to the city around it it's a very typical uh typical response but the culture it produces where it's it's comes with the people who are who are also migrants to the city is also a very interesting is also a very interesting uh, moment now based on uh, 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 these studies because there were many 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 interesting uh, negotiations that were happening in that culture of congestion that i was talking about there were many interesting negotiations that were happening uh, with the authorities with the local people with the migrants who have come in with new builders who are putting in money here because it's quick money for them Uh, the kind of investment that were coming were interesting so uh, one of my students called z uh, we worked on a game on a game of this place where it was mostly like monopoly but uh, with corruption alone right so that 
uh, whole morphology of that place was translated into uh, uh, a board game with different stakeholders like an office, PG, bungalow, uh, local people, right? Uh, and the government, like the tax department is there. There's no sewage over there. Then there's a temple there. there it has its own history over there. Uh, giving all of this, this is probably we thought one way of uh, experiencing that culture of that place is through is to go through a game that kind of takes you through what it means to live over there, what it means to pay rent over there, what it means to uh, have property over there, what it means to pay bribe over there, right? So this is a game that is being developed that is developed by Zip. Uh, hopefully, we'll have an online version of it or something, but. This is one way of understanding what happens in an urban village is what we thought. But the point to note here is uh, India is a land of villages and India is a land where now more cities are happening around the villages. So urban villages will be a place to look out for, for uh, something new in the idea of an urban moment. It, it's, it's due, I mean, it's, it's due I mean, there's a lot to be explored over there. So again, these becomes the uh, critical term. Like the culture of congestion is through through which you can understand what's happening there, and some a, a social intercourse that happens with all the inhabitants over there. There's there's a constant negotiation that happens, which this game kind of addresses. But these are the two things that that are exciting within an urban village, right? Now I'll go to the last part where uh, it's called the drift city. Now this is very, I mean, I'm very passionate about this from a, uh, just to think about these things, right? So uh, when I invited R Rashmi Savni, she is a, a professor in Bangalore. She's taught in many places before. To into this project, uh, now could be urbanism was a project that we did in 2018. And I invited her with the brief of like, can we look at where cities are heading or where the idea of urbanism is heading? She, along with Kaushik Bonnet, proposed this idea of a drift city. Right? So this is, again, uh, the stuff of science fiction. Right? This is where to go where no man has gone before, Star Wars, Star Trek, everything. Right? So this is, this is extremely exciting for us. And this is where I think... Um, especially the last three, four years since private funding has come into space exploration, the momentum has increased, right? So the car around the earth, this was a beautiful image. This is one step uh, towards looking at the idea of a drift city or a human settlements that's drifting in space. Again, this whole idea of an international space station is probably where the cutting edge of even architecture is there. Otherwise, we look at architecture as roti, kapda, makan, and makan is the basic necessity that is very grounded. But to uh, figure out a place that is floating and uh, orbiting the earth, I think that's where even the cutting edge of architecture lies. It's very interesting to think of that. This is Voyager 2, one of the initial ambitions of uh, a human uh, aspiration to kind of send out signals that saying we are here, these are our ideas, this, this is us. I will not go through this, but this is something I found very interesting. I think everybody should uh, look at it. What is what is on the Voyager a Golden Desk, right? And uh, Shreyank, uh, do you know what that is? Uh, no. So this is the image of Earth. That small dot you see, that is Earth, right? So the idea of drift city is very interesting because that the Earth becomes our origin, and this is uh, the image from Voyager One, which Carl Sagan insisted that before it goes out of sight, let's take one last look at the Earth and take a photograph of it. So this is a very exciting field for me to think space exploration and architecture, where it is heading. 
and uh, uh, I'll I'll end my presentation with a small video. Shank, if you can't hear me, just please let me know. In a fast, yeah, yeah. I can hear you. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on a boat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. The earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. Think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors so that in glory and triumph they could become the momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. Think of the endless cruelties visited by the inhabitants of one corner of this pixel on the scarcely distinguishable inhabitants of some other corner. How frequent their misunderstandings, how eager they are to kill one another, how fervent their hatreds. Our posturings, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe are challenged by this point. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. Visit? Yes. Settle? Not yet. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our stand. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character-building experience. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image. To me, it or is our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the only home we've ever known. Thanks, thanks so much, Naveen. Uh, for the presentation, yeah. I, do you have? I'll just end it with. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. So this could be urbanism is a booklet. You can uh, find it at that QR code. Uh, I'll also send the link to Shreyang so you, you, you can access it. It's it's got a lot of write ups and much more in detail there. You can uh, check it out. But uh, yeah, this was in 2018, so the the discourse has come a lot not ahead from there. And anybody who wants to reach out for me can do it at this email ID and uh, like, share and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks so much, Naveen. Um, this kind of nicely paced and uh, a lot of interesting points 
that came out from the presentation. Um, I mean, for me uh, personally, kind of you know, introduced an inter interesting range of ideas that um, that you have tried to bring forth, not only with yourself, but like what the nice thing is that you've always tried to kind of work and gather, let's say, um, fellows who are interested in, in this question of the future of uh, urbanism, so to speak. Um, so I actually, you know, uh, what is interesting to note for me was that in all cases, there was an interesting uh, moment of um, strange resistance that that emerges from various conditions, you know, which, which I found was very interesting that because a lot of the time um, urbanization is often read as this kind of a, you know, a process that is seamless, a process that is endless, or a process that is, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of a wave that washes over things. Yeah. What it's one of the interesting things that came across from your presentation was how uh, there are, you know, uh, you know, to kind of put it, it kind of inverts uh, those logics. You know, for instance, there's a resistance of this idea of internet in a village, for instance, you know, like uh, uh, which, yeah. which kind of can be accessed only on top of a tree, yeah. <laughs> which is quite interesting. Uh, or, or the cow uh, sort of becoming, a, you know, a, a, a commodity on the of, internet. Yeah. Commodity of the internet itself, which is which is super, super interesting, particularly also in today's uh, yeah. moment and how it's also kind of taken over our imagination. Uh, what I, One of the things that probably that, that idea of the ruralization does is that it, it uh, inverts our typical reading of urbanization. Yeah. In fact, one way to read urbanization according to what you're saying is that what's actually happening is the ruralization of the urban space in yeah. many, many, many ways as much as there is an urbanization of the rural space because i mean one way of to in, to read a lot of urban space including the big cities is is how uh, practices from which we typically understand or which in general understanding is kind of held as practices that belong to only some sort of an idyllic rural space yeah. which is you know concerned with uh, strange like you said obscure uh, religious practices yeah. Mytho uh, mythological, you know, um, but uh, that exists as part of our uh, way of thought, especially in our country. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So it's not just there's no. I mean, the scale is very vast. Yes. Like even if you like in architecture, if you look at just placing a commode right. these days, it has to be according to vastu. You are placing a commode. Yeah, right. From yeah, that right. to yeah. how cities are imagined in the country. There is right. this tendency to kind of hold on to a very mystical uh, past that somehow yes. makes sense for today's way of life. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah I was actually also thinking of uh, one of the, uh, the papers or essays that uh, Salman Benjamin had written on the urbanization of Mangalore, where yeah. let's say the, this, this belief that the land was of Mangalore was cursed by the local uh, Naga demons, you know, like so. So the so no matter which caste religion or you know, sect you belong to, yeah. you everybody asks if that land is being cleansed, you know, yeah. before any any urban project or yeah. a development project is, is taken. So it kind of fits in very interestingly with that kind of narratives of reading, uh, you know, the processes of urbanization. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah, I mean uh, that's something that's something really kind of interestingly stuck with me that. Um, how there are different processes which constantly keep resisting this generalized imagination of urbanization. Um, this this uh, idea of the rental economy this is also something that we've been working on like or thinking about particularly with respect to second cities where a lot of our studies also hinting towards that uh, yeah. that kind of a notion you know like doesn't doesn't matter the scale of the city but like I think depending on the um, what form of economy is kind of you know trying to find place? No, even this, the economy uh, and the kind of architecture it generates. It generates. Like if yes. you see the basic unit of that uh, PG, because right. we, we've designed such PGs and it breaks our heart. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's literally smaller than a jail cell. Yes. yes. But if somebody is getting such a space for five thousand per month, 
right. that particular area then that person is happy he absolutely deep yeah. or a bug bag so yeah so yeah. Uh, it's very interesting how these things are uh, related to aspiration and not comfort that architecture can provide correct correct so in fact i remember bangalore bangalore is full of this no like is like uh, i mean i've lived in many of these places yeah, yeah, when yeah, i was yeah. in bangalore shifted at least two to three times like yeah, yeah. Uh, places with no light no ventilation yeah, just yeah. like bunk you know bunk beds up to bunk beds and bunk beds and uh, it has to adhere to vastu vastu <laughs> <laughs> true it's very, it's, yeah, it's quite very nice quite interesting nice. yeah and and uh, i think as a methodology what is interesting is that you uh, you know kind of not not just opened up let's say a way of reading the reading the urbanization but also how do you speculate uh, yeah. from those conditions to let's yeah. say maybe not so much like a far flung an impossible future but just like a like a future yeah. that might be you know, that could be you know that uh, that's a you nice know, i think that's what that's what, uh, that's, that's what's ma- very interesting for me like even when i take up any projects with any student like documentation is something that students are very happy with but yeah. we kind of push them to look at a proposition as well like what can this go where can this go like right. so that research yeah. and pro- like documentation and proposition is part of research that's what i kind of Correct. look at Correct. without that proposition part the research like then you have no understanding of the research right so right. you need to kind of extrapolate it so yeah. Yeah, yeah one of the questions i had navin like since you also have a practice you know like a full fledged architectural practice so to speak where you make buildings I was wondering how does this uh, if you could tell us how does this process or this question or this framework that you've set for yourself kind of translates or sometimes comes in handy or you know is does it play a role in in your practice as such and uh, in the, the following question that I have for you is let's say um, given this kind of framework and this interest in the future of urbanization do from your practice side do you see any tendencies that are let's say that don't necessarily come in this presentation yeah uh, i would like to say yes but i kind of refrain from it because right uh, in in my practice any kind of prediction would mean somebody is going to put money on it correct so uh, i mean whenever we do let's say a feasibility report and we can see that some land around an scz is better but the urban village or the area next to that scz is also important right but we can't predict you know the growth yeah. of that place it's a speculation yeah. mm-hmm. it is interesting from an academic point of view but i can give a very good feasibility for how an scz would perform right but uh, how an urban village would perform it's very speculative correct so it's it's interesting it's for me it's a it's just a very constant interest to just keep documenting the changes and yeah. understanding why why things are happening right right and for myself it's like okay what if this does that kind of mm-hmm. thing so i mean it was a very exciting thing for us when we saw cow dung on amazon <laughs> it's like humne to bola tha ye aayega time right so it, it was very exciting 2012 2014 when we tour right 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 so when that kind of uh, thing happens Uh, landfills are very interesting i didn't get into right. that part but uh, a landfill has a typical 40 year cycle okay. so you can actually map that next 40 years and then hmm. propose hmm. something for that after 40 years what it should become okay okay so uh, this is something that we are doing some research on but uh, uh, yeah landfills are very interesting yeah yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I went through your uh, that uh, could be urbanisms document. It's quite yeah. quite interesting. It has this the story of the landfill in uh, yeah. Gaza, if I'm not wrong. Gazipur, yeah. Gaz, yeah, Gazipur. Yeah, I mean the the following the question that I the second question that I had now was basically to ask maybe you know like this is purely let's say the kind of exercise that you do uh, interestingly also with a lot of peers. Um, I was wondering if you had any. uh reflections on what directions you see from your practice with respect to this situations of you know varying kinds of urbanizing uh, you know conditions and how does architecture sort of respond to um uh, 
these things and maybe from your projects have you uh, something that if it's if it's not then it's okay just like something no, that no, i mean i yeah. wish it does yeah but uh, somewhere the practice is very again as i said it doesn't give you scope to like like it's like two things right in both cases people are giving you money right <laughs> funds but in in such research yeah. they are giving you money to do whatever you want like right right research yeah. but there i'm liable ki no i have to give them back something that is of equal value correct, correct so the kind of approach in both the kind of responsibilities on both uh, uh, right, right. domains is different yeah. but uh, somewhere architecture gets grounded very hard in the profession like it's roti kapda makan ka makan se aage nahi jayega you know that that design is very 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 hardcore correct and it doesn't let you be at the cutting edge but the more right. sensitive you are at the ground it helps correct Yeah. so it will it will make you go back or go deep into the ground right. or yeah. into the social fabric yeah it will not uh, ask you to push push the limits there right so but right. with research you can you can imagine like yeah. like the ruralization thing yeah in, in that book there is a small short story on uh, the idea of a ritual city yes where a city is made purely to uh, you know exercise rituals of a parallel yes. city so yeah, you can yeah. just book a puja and it will happen mm. there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. so a whole city or a system of servers and things that are correct that is a city design right just to fulfill rituals online <laughs> right 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 so this is an imagination that that can happen with a very academic feel yeah 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 Yeah, I mean, these are some of the questions that I had. I'm wondering if if there are any questions from the audience side. Yeah, I don't see any in the chat at least. Um, but if anybody has any questions, uh, please feel free to yeah. either type in or just raise your hand or something. I think we we'll, we can let you in to ask questions from your side. so it's quite helpful for for at least for our uh, you know this this kind of study that we have been pursuing ourselves so there's there's someone shisha bhat hi hi shisha you hello hi shisha tell me shisha yeah, is my yeah. student acha yeah. i'm 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 very sure i should thank sir uh, uh, for a great presentation today but uh, the only question that i had uh, for the housing scenario uh, is out of curiosity that i wanted to ask is out of all the uh, housing scenarios that you showed here sir is it uh, only because of the kind of it uh, that we see here on the outskirts or is it also because of the uh, era of liberalization that we had after 1991 uh, because there has been enough study to say that after government told okay let's not have uh, you know uh, government sector told no let's not do socialistic republic where they told no let's not take up housing projects anymore when the government told no let's not take up housing projects anymore but let's support privatization and then when privatization became uh, you know a predominant thing that's when i think I, I don't know i'm i'm just thinking aloud so i thought let's yeah, take yeah, up I your view so combination of uh, both shisha because uh, here if if, if uh, 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 because there's still some uh, uh, really decent parts of the bangalore and i'm, I'm sure you're much uh, better in the kind of studies that you've done for the city but i'm thinking that there are still some really really interesting parts of the bangalore that haven't been vulnerable for such projects yet so i don't know i mean so is it only because of no, it think, or no no it is it it, i think it's in a lifetime of a city or i don't know if there's any end to that lifetime of a city we are going through a, a that phase where uh, apartments are a hot commodity so even even though there are excess uh units in bangalore unsold units in bangalore people are investing in it 
because somewhere like let's say the economics of that is such okay. that like if you make 300 units and you if, if okay. you sell 150 units you you recovered your base amount so the okay. real estate is at that place okay and okay the main thing is because the buying power of 20 to 35 has increased and in okay. bangalore it has been mainly because of the uh, corporates for sure okay okay but so, the next housing boom is in the tier 2 cities outskirts of tier 2 cities that is for sure and this pradhan mantri awas yojana which uh, is targeting that uh, oh the demand for it is uh, it's such an unexplored okay. field i mean we are working on a couple of those projects but the okay. demand we get when we uh, send out the applications it's huge 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 uh, boom that's going to happen in hoje for sure i mean the the pmay schemes is it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. the, the the places that it needs to target or it is targeting around the tier 2 cities especially okay. the ews and the low income uh, category uh, that requirement for housing for that category is huge Right. Okay, and uh, are the uh, are these investments uh, just to add on to Shisha's questions, or or these interests that uh, you're suggesting for PMEY coming from that section, or are people seeing it as an investment? You know, investment. Private developers are getting into it. Okay, okay, right. right. Yeah, yeah, because we, I mean, again, this would be an urban form within a within a place which has no mm-hmm. uh, such cluster. to have like 500 units plot correct around it it it, it it will become an urban form right right and one of the places outside of uh, tumkur here the initial survey we made the requirement was for 3000 houses right of ews category alone correct uh, and the pilot project is around 450 houses correct so uh, to get them together I, this is go- housing will be an urban form for sure right 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 that's interesting that you say yeah. i mean so, any uh, yeah shisha go ahead sir no no sorry sorry uh, i i i think i'm intruding no no go ahead please i was intruding <laughs> I, uh, i i had another question uh, the second part of my question was uh, largely uh, in uh, metropolitan cities at least uh, where we have metro largely to bring in some sort of a system to cities uh, don't we think affordability affordability could be looked at uh, apart from housing let's say uh, uh, we were discussing at uh, one of our labs uh, very recently where uh, when we told affordable housing is not just about housing housing as such but what if let's say uh, it's not just about house but let's say if Uh, X Y Z person is uh, probably put in the outskirts of the city, but if there is last mile connectivity, uh, connectivity through the metro, but there is still affordability through metro. Uh, if if it is, if it is there is if if there is per capita uh, sort of uh, uh, you know uh, some some sort of a saving that he is doing from his salary at the end of the month. so then i think that's more affordability is what is the kind of research that we uh, sort of tried looking at so then what are your views on that sir so then this is very would, confusing would for work? even uh, me shisha because yeah. i know people who's, who are traveling from tumkur to bangalore every day because they have a train and okay. i know people who moved out of bangalore to mysore because in mysore you get a 4 bhk villa with a pool for one cr and since it's work from home i know a lot of people who moved there so it's a very uh, i mean i i'm confused of what this pattern is actually and where it's going to head even i'm not sure shank i think prasad uh, is, uh, has missed has i don't see prasad but yeah i mean i think he's here yeah thanks uh... uh thank you very much very nice very nice i i mean at at sea also we kind of you know keep keep doing this large arcs and and you know 
keep on jumping scales of yeah. uh, of the optic you know the the from where we see na so so the large arc and the and the small arc and 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 we kind of keep on getting into the nuts and bolts as well as talk about the universe uh yeah and in the same breath actually and yeah. that, that was that was very familiar uh with the with the uh with the way you kind of you know spoke about um uh, uh, the world and the universe actually it's very nice i was, i was thinking you know when you were speaking i was thinking that 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 like like in that in in the scale with which we kind of you know i mean you, you brought in carl sagan at the end with the scale scale at we at which we kind of you know uh when we kind of you know when we pull out the scale yeah and carl sagan himself kind of you know i don't know yeah. whose voice it was there it was carl sagan yeah. so so carl sagan himself kind of you know uh kind of almost trivializes the politics yeah you know of humanity yeah and so and and then and then and then to a, to a, for example to the previous question you speak so passionately about the uh, housing missions yeah you know so and i'm just thinking i'm just thinking how do we how do we kind of you know uh put yeah. these two things together you know, like yeah 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 they're both super inter- like super interesting and engaging as kind of you know we are we are constantly kind of and this is this has been a difficulty that you know difficulty which is kind of you know historical difficulty actually that 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 you want to think of the world as if it's an illusion yeah. but then that does not help you to kind of you know engage uh, in daily practice uh, it doesn't energize you yeah it doesn't energize you to live it you know yeah and 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 that difficulty is been there historically among philosophers yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. when how do we kind of you know it's a beginning so, of an existential crisis yeah it is kya kar raha hu it is it is <laughs> yeah you know it like at at you 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 there is there is fatalism and uh, uh, futility at one end which is kind of which appears to be very convincing yeah uh, but at the other end there is you know every day and the politics and the energy and 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 no, even the idea of luxury and luxury everything oh, i mean it seems so frivolous at time like why 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 you need luxury time yes but, but at yeah. the same time that is the one which energizes you to kind of talk about the universe so it's like it's yeah, like yeah. it's this constant juggling of scales yeah. uh uh that we kind of you know how do we how do you how do you kind of where do you rest you know where do you where do you kind i'm of- i'm literally in an existential crisis now professor last year and a half or so i've entered like existential crisis ki main kya kar raha hu aur kyu kar raha hu ab main kab tak karta rahunga why why okay now i'm doing this building like next what why <laughs> till how long i'm literally going through this i'm enjoying what i'm doing no no doubts i'm very the, i'm, I'm sure. very passionate about design but there is a voice at the back of my head that says good you're enjoying but what next and till when that that is there i'm i'm going through that right now <laughs> yeah shayan you want to intervene here yeah i mean i was just thinking like the the I mean, precisely yeah, the, the it's very when you um, think of this you know absolute zoomed out view of the universe and look at the world as a speck and the 1960s moment was like probably like like for like a mass at least beyond the philosophers you know uh, domain kind of really made that existential crisis very evident you know, when you when we saw the this blue bubble from moon uh, and everybody suddenly started to realize that this is what we have kind of a thing uh, which which interesting uh but but i was like thinking what happens i think uh between that that the micro and that mega not even like not even uh, macro it's like it's like you know the scaleless scale nothingness of the nothing no this kind of that that dimension what is interesting prasad in what you asked na like just an anecdote here um uh, so for instance 
Karl Marx wrote his uh, PhD on the idea of nature in two philosophy, two uh, you know pre-Socratic philosophers, and he's talking the same thing there. Like you know, like how does two, these two philosophers are debating? How does the universe come into existence? Why are there so many forms? Um, so both of them are saying, you know, atoms come together to produce forms. Both have different arguments of how they produce it. But where Marx concludes the thesis is by saying that whatever the form of you know atomization and coming together of atoms, he he links it with politics directly. He says because atoms don't adhere to a straight line and they can swerve around and bump into each other and create you know new forms, that became an exemplary model for politics in Greek society, which is a friendship, is a free movement, and the idea of democracy. the idea of you know liberty freedom have that engra- in sort of engraving that strange you know insight which is coming from an absolute void where atoms are bumping into each other which we can't see and we assume that there is something called as atoms which are bumping into each other becomes the precise political model for freedom democracy friendship so on and so forth you know so which is which is like i think links which is a very strange gap to link But but there is that that link of politicizing or you know bringing in the political dimension in that absolute nothingness of the universe, and and that's precisely what you are arguing, right? Like you know what what binds the universe together. So some said it was earth, water, you know the the basic elements. Some said it was just water. Some said it was just air. But then there's somebody also who said that it is all of this with love and hate. which kind of makes the universe and i think i think that's the that's the political dimension one can think of and just another point to that thing i think what becomes interesting in this in this kind of thinking is that the political is always seen as at a meso level or at a micro level i think at a mega level like when you take a carl sagan view i think right because nothing really matters but i think the life gets lived at the meso and the micro level no like on an everyday so that's what I, i i like two perspectives or i always yeah. like a, a anthropologist perspective because they come from like single atom to now yeah their their perspective on anthropologists or even um, uh, geologists the way they look at it is from like the big bang and the, yeah yeah, uh, yeah so they get that perspective and i also like the perspective of uh, astronomers or i mean astronomers because they give you a cosmic perspective i mean it i mean architecture becomes a small uh, topic within this but just to have your range it's always good i mean architecture can be our lens to talk about this thing but to have that range is something i've always been fascinated with yeah. so so and i'm just thinking you 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 are both absolutely right in the sense that that uh, uh, humanity's uh, limits of uh, uh, you know uh, politics kind of you know ends at the un and the uh, and 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 american president actually so that's a kind of a, uh, no, that's the kind of a, being cynical that, that's that's I mean. that's, that's the <laughs> limits of human human politics yeah. and actually but i'm i'm just thinking you know with what you started no when when you when in your first images about the cow dung and amazon and uh, it's interesting how the how uh, uh, and 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 uh, that fascinating concept of uh, uh, ruralization actually it was uh, i think many years ago navin has been thinking of this yeah. since quite some time this uh, the idea that 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 everybody speaks of urbanization and there is this tremendous urbanization uh, you know uh, euphoria and excitement and also uh, uh, suspicion and doubt around uh, the idea of urbanization but but at the same time there is a simultaneous ruralization of the world yeah. where you kind of you know see commodities moving whether this is cow dung or alibaba moving things uh, you know across yeah. the world from a uh, variety yeah. of places actually does it still exist now like yeah 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 you know so it's like that, the owner was uh, whatever arrested or something no? sorry what 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 that the owner of alibaba wasn't he like arrested or it's a state of china no so that doesn't yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like the taobao villages is basically yeah. 
uh, basically you know these are the villages which are kind of you know moving uh, village goods into uh, into into variety of cities so this this so but in this there is a there is a there is a uh, 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 you know uh, 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 the internet or the new media uh, new technology kind of there is that the the network king abilities and the and the and the uh, mobility uh, um, enhancing abilities of of the internet uh, new media uh, appear to be kind of you know very very strong and then there was there was also a very there was there was also a very uh, uh, very big uh, you know promise and excitement about them uh, in the last decade until the last decade but suddenly you know in your in your subsequent slides and your critique of uh, uh, the smart city and the and 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 and, and, and smartness and 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 also uh, which which appears to be kind of you know parallelly kind of you know taking place uh, like a, like a, uh, and and that 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 is also kind of you know simultaneously happening like there is so 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 there is this so so it, it's it's a it's a simultaneous yeah you know things that 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 happened in the presentation yeah until a year back even i was thinking to the idea of smart as a lo- as a new local as something where uh, physical spaces how do they transform when there is internet there or internet not there like physical actual occupied spaces uh right. like that tree being a uh, pds uh, point of distribution say until then i was thinking about physical habitation uh, that internet phys- facilitates but since corona happened and and that whole notion of local and smart changed for me in my head because the whole world went online uh, my whole work everything went online so that was a major shift and when when i saw that slide of when i saw that article about uh, a funeral that was organized by the gamers for one of these fellow gamers in an online space i thought uh, okay now it's it's the whole idea of community and uh, space and world is different it's uh, and i think uh, six months later that that metaverse came from facebook Yeah. So the way we inhabit the world is now going to be a lot digital. Like there are algorithms in few games where they haven't even designed the world. The algorithm kind of designs the world as that when you go ahead. So depending on where you go, you can kind of right. the world unravels itself to you. So the idea of world building and it, it it's become infinite. So the idea of, through the idea of. Uh, smart or the internet right and then um did the peer just zabardasti pull me in i had put in my question so and i thought it was uh, actually an interesting bridge between what uh, prasad and you were just discussing uh when you said that uh, you find yourself in an existential spot uh, you know i feel that uh, we all have our own contracts with existential crisis and so we we try to kind of make sense of things in some way and that's where my question was located that uh, you know how do you in this could be urbanism that we locate how do you then start articulating the role of the architect uh and what would the possible kind of uh, uh ways be to plug into into these kinds of streams uh, meaningfully for uh, for with the skill set that we have so any thoughts on that when we start looking at these uh, five urban forms that i was talking about uh i think the architecture comes from it like we when we studied the uh, landfill on the outskirts of bangalore and we saw the 40 year span of that then 
somewhere you're looking at the people who might inhabit it for the next five years, ten years, and probably it will become a land worthy of investment after forty years. So the kind of spaces that you would propose would also have a shelf life. So it it becomes very specific uh, to that context. Like uh, again, if you're looking at building anything in an urban village. uh like recently we had a competition for an urban village which had like a village square now the future of that place is going to be like a toilet again because there are corporates and everything right right across a certain lake so this is going to get densified so the intervention at this point of time is to keep the heart of the village as it is so that's what the crux of that competition was so it becomes very context specific uh and uh, the indian social fabric or the morphology is so so diverse like within like a 200 meters gap you might have to look at two different radically different things if you start looking at it uh, through close lens so yeah i mean the opportunity is to come up with a new form is is immense but we are actually struggling to even do the basic form at at the moment there yeah. for some reason i can't see any questions so anuj if you can see the questions uh do you want to let me know if there are any other questions in the chat there are none there are none oh deepthi can you please read i really can't see them No, no there are no questions oh no, no questions no sorry question. sorry okay yeah. <laughs> all right so uh, navin thanks once again uh, it was really yes. exciting and uh, good to have you and you know to, see, to hear your thoughts uh, and hope to see many more such projects from your end yeah. uh, in the near future man thanks thanks for joining and uh, see you soon thanks thanks for inviting me right. thanks so, for see and thanks yeah. share for the discussion thank you thank yeah. you so we'll have a next cct event uh, the third cct event next week um, so everybody who's attending now please do join again next week and navin please you're more than welcome sure, to join yeah. again yeah. so this will be an ongoing discussion we have about 6 uh, to 7 uh, presenters in total from different backgrounds so we'll be speaking about this uh, idea of beyond metropolis so the questions beyond metropolis so please feel free to join the next discussions great thank you thanks thanks yeah bye bye